Greetings and welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith. It's wonderful to have you here. What I want to talk about today is not necessarily a wonderful topic. I want to talk about the Zika virus. Uh, surely you've seen it in the news, heard about it on television. It's all the rage uh, currently. What is the Zika virus? Actually, we've known about the Zika virus since the 40s. However, we've never had an outbreak of it, as far as we know, like this. Uh, mainly in the Americas and in the Caribbean. Uh, currently an outbreak affecting the last numbers I saw, estimated between half a million and 1.3 million people. Now, it's not like something that you get it and it's necessarily fatal. Uh, actually, most reports are that the symptoms are relatively mild, generally last for a week, though they can be more severe. However, there's a growing belief that there's a connection between the virus and microencephaly in children born to pregnant women who had the virus. Microencephaly is really a tragic circumstance where the skull of the baby uh, is too small and as a result it affects brain development. Really, truly, truly tragic. Uh, actually, there's reports that it's so serious, and it's a mosquito-borne illness, that it may truly be beyond simply being an epidemic and may be endemic, meaning it could become a regular seasonal feature, uh, much like uh, yellow fever or dengue fever. So it's been in the news a lot, but what I have today is hot off the presses, at least as of the time of this taping. Just a few hours ago, the BBC reported on uh, the following, says Zika virus infection through sex reported in U.S. And that is from the BBC website, February 3rd, 2016. And it really is an interesting tale. There had been questions leading up to this about whether or not the Zika virus could be spread through a sexual transmission and whether that was a big concern or not. And now of these few cases in the United States, they apparently believe that one truly is through sexual contact. Uh, actually, the analysis by James Gallagher here is really pretty helpful. He says that uh, the main way Zika is spread is by mosquitoes. So far, authorities have said sexual transmission is rare, but last year they would have said any case of Zika was rare too, which is an excellent point. Part of the challenge with this disease is we just don't know that much about it. Again, though we knew about it in the 40s, they didn't study it a whole lot because it really wasn't impacting human populations in a large way. Uh, he, he says, this explosive outbreak has caught the world by surprise and many key questions remain unanswered. Uh, so they really do believe this person has spread the disease through sexual contact and they are saying that it's a real possibility. They don't even know exactly how through sexual contact, what bodily fluids are impacted. Is it really just one kind of bodily fluid or all bodily fluids? Because we just don't know. But it does bring to me to two main points that I want to say. Number one, it's not popular to say today, however it is so true that sexual contact outside of Christian biblical marriage is still inherently an incredibly dangerous activity. And I'm not trying to be scary about sex. God designed sex to work within marriage. Uh, it does wonderful things. It helps bond husband and wife. It's how we continue our species. I'm not trying to be scary, but I am trying to say God knows what He's talking about. He didn't design it to be something partaken of outside of Christian biblical marriage. Uh, and we don't talk about that. We talk about everything but that when it comes to stopping the spread of disease. Why not talk about one of the simplest measures? And it's nice to have a fact like this in the news confirming what we know to be true, which is that God knows what He's talking about. But the second item I want to bring up is the Bible is very clear. Go global pandemics are on the way. The, the Zika viruses, relatively small fries, compared to the things the Bible says is coming. And what can we do? How can the CDC prepare for the things that are to come that truly will be pandemic? The fact is there's no vaccine against the things to come. God says these things are coming because of our sins. In fact, let me just reference Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 16. God says, because of sin, I also will do this to you. I will even appoint terror over you, wasting disease and fever, which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. 
You know, I read that, well, actually even the consume the eyes because the Zika virus is, is known to cause pain in the eyes of people, but the sorrow of heart and the poor broken-hearted families uh, having these children uh, knowing that they're not going to survive because we have a sinful world, a broken world. You know, there's no vaccine for the things that are coming. There just isn't. There's one solution. And we here in tomorrow's world continue to emphasize it. And we will continue to emphasize it. And that is repentance and turning to God. May we all seek to do that. Let's be thankful that Jesus Christ is bringing a world in which things like this will be a thing of the past. Thank you for listening. And please do check out tomorrowsworld.org for the rest of our resources.